Hello, I'm Richard Wilson. Welcome to Driveline. Well, as the seasons change, we thought it might be good to bring you one last look at the cars of summer. I'm talking about wind in your hair excitement as we look at three of the most fun convertibles you'll ever want to drive. That and more on Driveline. Welcome back to the special look at the cars of summer on Driveline. The convertible, it's had its ups and downs throughout the years. During the 1950s and 60s, the convertible surfaced as one of the most exciting body styles of the emerging car culture. However, during the 1970s and 80s, the convertible virtually disappeared from the American auto marketplace. But the drop top is back and it's better than ever. One of the cars responsible for the current popularity in convertibles is the Miata from Mazda. Its style is reminiscent of cars with names like Healy and Jaguar, but you'll find it has a niche all its own. Big fun in a small package. That's the best way to describe the Miata from Mazda. The Miata debuted back in 1989 as a 1990 model. It was the world's first look at Mazda's Kansai design program. The Miata, a small two-seater convertible, came out at a time when GM was canceling their two-seaters and Mercury's new Capri was delayed on the drawing board. The Miata was an instant hit. In some cases, dealers were asking and getting more than twice the original $14,000 sticker price. Why all the fuss? Well, quite simply, sitting behind the wheel of this little wonder is a purely sensual and exciting adventure. The raspy exhaust note, the 140 mile per hour speedometer, and the smooth delivery of power belie the fact that the Miata is powered by a small 1.6 liter, 16 valve dual overhead cam four cylinder that generates a maximum horsepower rating of 116 at 6,500 RPMs. The Miata has been EPA estimated at 24 miles per gallon in the city, 30 on the highway. Our test loop of mixed highway and city driving gave us an average of 28 miles per gallon on regular unleaded gasoline. The Miata weighs slightly more than 2,000 pounds, so that little 1.6 liter engine doesn't have to work too hard to get moving. It literally flies through the lower gears, but it really sings in the higher RPMs. The five-speed manual transmission is extremely precise and it had the shortest throws of any car we've tested so far. Our test model, served up to us in basic black, is a brand new luxury package that puts a sophisticated touch of class on this sporty roadster. Beneath the tan vinyl top, you'll find leather-faced seats and a leather-wrapped steering wheel. The brake handle is sheathed in polished wood, and the knob on the gear shift is a famous nardy wood handle. With the soft top up, there's more headroom than you'd expect, but the Miata was built for the joy of top-down fun. The rear plastic window easily zips out, and the manual soft top neatly retracts into its dedicated storage compartment. The removable tonneau cover easily snaps into place. Wind noise isn't as bad as you might expect, and you can easily carry on a conversation. Our black Miata test model came equipped with the optional speed-sensitive power steering, an AM-FM stereo cassette, a driver's side airbag, and more. The optional equipment also included cruise control, a power antenna, headrest speakers, stainless steel scuff plates, a limited slip differential, BBS alloy wheels, air conditioning, and ABS anti-lock brakes. The instrument cluster in the Miata is nearly identical to the RX-7s. The only difference here is the use of a single face plate in the Miata as opposed to the separate covers in the RX-7. It's not a bad looking treatment in the Miata, but in bright sunlight, it does tend to pick up reflective glare off the steering wheel. The AM-FM cassette provided ample sound, and the optional headrest speakers gave the illusion of literally being surrounded in sound. 
The stereo features 1 AM and 2 FM banks of presets, as well as a passive anti-theft code that kills the stereo if removed from the car. Our Miata's climate control system was exceptionally strong. The optional air conditioning even worked well with the top down, and it did not affect the 1.6 liter engine's performance. The Miata is a traditional rear-wheel drive car, but you'd never know it from the way it holds the road in tight turns. The rack and pinion speed-sensitive steering and independent front and rear double wishbone suspension virtually glue this car to the road. But as beautiful as it is, even the prettiest rose has its thorns, and the Miata has its share too. Leg room for anyone over 5 feet 8 inches tall is minimal at best. The radio display, while visible under direct sunlight, is totally obscured by glare most any other time of day. The trunk space is only 3.6 cubic feet. It's not much room, but then again, most people don't buy a Miata for its trunk space. There's just enough room for about two bags of cat litter, which you'll need to weight the car down if you plan on doing any winter driving. With the Miata's lightweight and its even 50-50 weight distribution, the Miata is not a car for winter driving. Lastly, the rear plastic window tends to distort the view from the rear view mirror, and it's something you'd probably have to replace in a few years. But Mazda does offer an optional detachable hardtop with a rear window defroster for only $1,500 as of today's show. The Miata may not be the fastest convertible on the road today, and it may not be the cheapest. Chevrolet offers a wide variety of convertible models, from the Geo Metro to the Cavalier and Camaro, while Ford offers the Mustang and Mercury has the Capri. But if you want a car with one foot firmly in the past and another in the future, a convertible that's more than just a car without a roof, then you might want to take one more look at the MX-5 Miata from Mazda. The Miata has changed little since our last report. The most visible change is the optional rear wing spoiler that goes in the back. Other than that, you'll find few changes in this almost perfect roadster. Rather than making specific soft top models, American manufacturers tend to make soft top versions of the regular fleet, such as the case of the Cavalier RS convertible from Chevrolet. The Cavalier is arguably the most popular car in the Chevrolet lineup. Our test model, a bright aqua blue 1993 RS convertible, goes far towards explaining the attraction. The Cavalier has one of the most versatile body styles that Chevrolet produces. You can choose from a sedan, wagon, or a sporty two-door coupe. You also have a choice of power plants. A 2.2-liter four-cylinder is standard on both the VL and RS. Our Cavalier RS test model came equipped with a fuel-injected 3.1-liter six-cylinder engine that produces 140 horsepower at 4,200 RPMs and 185 foot-pounds of torque at 3,200 RPMs. The EPA estimates that you'll get 20 miles per gallon in the city, 28 on the highway. Our test model, which also came equipped with a three-speed automatic transmission, gave us an average of 24 miles per gallon in mixed highway and city driving. You can expect a cruising range of about 365 miles on a full tank of gas. And cruising is what this car is made for. The standard clear coat metallic paint and optional bolt-on wheel covers give the Cavalier RS a sportier image than it's had in years. Add the optional easy to clean white vinyl interior and you're ready to roll. Available in either black or white, the Cavalier's convertible soft top has one of the tightest seals we've tested yet. With the top up, road noise is a little harsh. Some additional insulation in the soft top storage boot would really help here. The power vinyl drop top quickly retracts and a padded tonneau cover easily snaps into place. On the road, the Cavalier RS and its optional six-cylinder engine give you spirited performance with a minimum of harshness. The Z51 handling package is optional and includes both a tripodometer and tachometer as well as sport suspension and touring tires. The Z51 handling package gives you all the handling of the Cavalier Z24, but in a package that's easier to ensure. Inside, our Cavalier RS test model was outfitted in the optional white vinyl trim. Now, you might find the idea of sitting on vinyl seats a little sticky, but we found that they remained comfortable even in direct sunlight. If you prefer, you can stick with the standard sport cloth seats, which are pre-treated with Scotchgard. The dashboard is standard Chevrolet design, classic, unassuming, and very easy to read. 
Controls for the lights, wipers, cruise control, and turn signals rest on two stocks that flank the steering wheel. The interior vehicle lights are controlled by two circular switches on the dash. They're placed close to the steering wheel and easy to accidentally adjust. Optional power window controls are located on the center console, just below the gear shift. Located beneath the stereo, the Cavalier now boasts an environmentally friendly air conditioning unit. Our test model also featured the Delco ETR FM stereo with the optional cassette player. An optional compact disc player is now available on both the RS and VL models. The dashboard cup holders are a nice touch. It shows that the automakers are in tune with what we like in the car. The back seats are kind of tight, but you'll find extra storage back here by way of the cargo nets attached to the front seats. Speaking of storage, even though the Cavalier RS offers 13 cubic feet of trunk space and another handy cargo net, you still lose about 3 cubic feet of trunk to the convertible top's storage cachet. When the time comes that you have to say goodbye to the summer sun and the roof must go up, you'll find the power roof controls just above the rear view mirror. Once the roof is up, lock the catches and you're on your way. As far as convertibles go, the Cavalier RS is the most accessible and easiest to own that we've tested. The glass rear window and electric rear window defogger improve the all-year capabilities of this car. The Cavalier RS convertible is loaded with plenty of built-in and optional value. Front disc brakes and four-wheel anti-lock brakes are standard. You can choose from either the four- or six-cylinder engine, which is now available with both the RS and VL models. You can also choose from the standard five-speed or the Getrag five-speed manual transmission with its shorter gear ratios, or the three-speed automatic. There's also a toll-free customer assistance number and a 24-hour roadside assistance number to help you out in emergency situations. And a three-year, 36,000-mile bumper-to-bumper limited warranty. Base priced at under $16,000, the Cavalier RS convertible is certainly the value leader in American convertibles, but it does have its rivals in the market. Dodge offers a limited edition shadow convertible, and Chrysler makes a drop top for the LeBaron. Ford's entry is the Mustang LX and GT. The Mustang is due for a body style change soon, and there's no word about the availability of a soft top. Internally, there's the competition from Chevrolet's sister division, Pontiac. The Pontiac Sunbird varies only slightly from the Cavalier and has many of the same options. The Cavalier RS convertible from Chevrolet. It's fun to drive and easy on the pocketbook. If you're deciding whether or not to buy your first convertible, there are several things you'll want to keep in mind. Am I going to drive this car in the winter? How well insulated is the top? Is the heater strong enough to keep the car warm in Michigan's sub-zero cold? Will the soft top survive the harsh elements? And what about that rear window? Should you shop plastic or glass? Distortion is easy if you mishandle the thin plastic windows and they tend to cloud over in a couple of years. Is a rear defogger important to you? It might be in the winter. Glass windows are great if you can get them, but like those on the Cavalier and its sister to Sunbird, the windows are quite a bit smaller than their standard versions. Coming up in the auto news, Chrysler introduces a brand new small car and Rolls Royce makes its introduction to Detroit. Victor, this isn't just a drawing, it's a cry for help. Listen to the children. Learn to protect them from drugs and violence. Call now and take a bite out of crime. That's my dad. And that's mom. Dad's got an idea. A way to get rid of all the grody garbage that's polluting the world. He's invented a big rocket ship to shoot all the garbage into outer space. Mom's not sure, but dad says his invention will save the world. There's an easier way to save the world. Recycle. For your free recycling action guide, write Recycle. Environmental Defense Fund, 257 Park Avenue South, New York, New York. Welcome back to Driveline. The Chrysler Corporation is re-entering the compact car market with its first all-original small car in five years. The all-new Neon represents a $1.3 billion investment in Chrysler's future. 
Chrysler started with a clean sheet and set out to design a car that would challenge the world's perceptions with what an American small car could be. The results go on sale January 2nd of next year. What can you expect in a Neon? Standard dual airbags, a powerful 16-valve overhead cam engine, available integrated child safety seats, and available anti-lock brakes. Prices have yet to be announced, but you can expect to pay around $10,000 for the four-door model. A two-door version will be available in the spring of 94. Cars like the Neon make broad use of recyclable plastics. In fact, by volume, plastics make up more than 10% of the modern car. And since the average life of a typical car is nearly 10 years, we will soon be faced with the question of how to best go about disposing of all this excess plastic. The HMS Rose and DuPont Automotive. They're not exactly a pair you'd think you'd find together, but this odd couple of the largest of the tall ships to ever sail the Great Lakes and one of America's premier plastics manufacturers is a perfect duo for the 90s. The HMS Rose is an American-built replica of an English frigate from the Revolutionary War era. Today it is on a far more peaceful mission. It promotes the ecological study and understanding of our waterways. The DuPont in the 1990s, it is a dramatic demonstration of our latest technology to improve the environment. For centuries, ships like the Rose have been powered by the wind, with nothing but fragile canvas sails to catch the breeze. But using new technology, DuPont has supplied all 13,000 square feet of sails from recycled car fenders and 126,000 used pop bottles. This new technology will help address the concerns with today's greener cars. Well known that plastics have a lead role in making vehicles green. They offer the greatest potential to reduce weight, improve fuel economy, and lower emissions for the useful life of the vehicle. Really? But because of their rapid increase in usage, we now must find ways to keep them from contributing to the environmental problem when vehicles reach the end of their useful life. Of course, the solution isn't to just make sailcloth out of old car parts, but it does go a long way towards demonstrating the flexibility of today's plastics. And retail sales news, Ford Motor has kept the top spot in overall sales for the first half of 93, while the rest of the big three have also posted impressive numbers for the same time period. GM's Pontiac division has set a sales record of more than 60,000 vehicles last June, making that its highest monthly sales since June of 1990. Nissan has also posted an impressive 20% increase over last year's record by selling a total of 65,361 units, making this their best first half since 1989. J.D. Power & Associates have released the results of the latest customer satisfaction survey for the past year. Lexus leads the pack with 175 points, with Infiniti in a close second scoring 170 points. GM's Saturn division is still in the top three with 156 points, followed by Mercedes-Benz, Audi, Cadillac, Toyota, Acura, Jaguar, and Lincoln. Other nameplates that scored above the industry average of 135 points were Honda, Oldsmobile, Buick, Saab, and Volvo. The top-rated truck manufacturers were Toyota with 165 points, Oldsmobile with 146 points, and Dodge with 142 points. Recalls are also in the news. Of course, by now, most everyone should know that GM's Saturn division has recalled just about every car they've ever made. The recall is to install a new wiring harness that will reduce the chances of an electrical fire. Ford Motor also has a recall issued on 1991 Escorts for problems with the fuel and electrical systems and on the 1992 Escort for problems with the light switches. To find out if you have a car that is affected by a recall of any sort, contact the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration's hotline at one 800 424-9393. This number doesn't include any special repair policies that aren't covered by a recall. For more complete information, contact your car maker's customer assistance number that can be found in your owner's manual. Our Vintage Car of the Month is a modified 1984 Pontiac Fiero convertible owned by Mr. John Harlow Jr. of West Bloomfield, Michigan. Custom wheels and an Oldsmobile V8 make this one fast mover. The removable top and side pieces make this car weather tight. If you have a car of any age that you think is something special, why not drop us a line at Driveline, care of WTRY, 500 West Big Beaver, Troy, Michigan, 48084. Rolls-Royce was in town recently to introduce their new line, the Silver Spur 3 and the Bentley Turbo R. 
The Silver Spur 3 offers a redesigned 6.75 liter naturally aspirated V8 engine, a new transmission shift energy management system, improved ride and handling, and free scheduled maintenance for three years. Interior improvements include new passenger airbags, new styled seats, and more, including optional Sony LCD color TVs in the headrests. And yes, before you ask, the VCR is in the trunk. The Bentley Turbo R features many of the same mechanical enhancements of the Silver Spur 3 with the inclusion of a turbocharger that produces, quote, more than substantial horsepower, unquote. Both of these cars ride and drive fantastically. The driver would have no clue that these cars weigh more than two tons each. With prices starting at just under $190,000 for the Spur and $208,000 for the Bentley Turbo, it's easy to understand why Rolls-Royce only needs to sell 1,300 of these cars to make a profit. There's no shortage of high-end Luxo exotic convertibles on the market. Rolls-Royce, Mercedes, and Porsche all offer soft top models. But some of the best of the affordable luxury convertibles come from the Coventry factories of Jaguar. The XJS has changed little since its introduction in 1975. However, the 1992 model year saw some of the biggest changes yet in Jaguar's top-of-the-line 12-cylinder sports car. Our test model was a British racing green convertible featuring the new tan soft top and matching tan leather interior. You wouldn't know it to look at it, but the 92 XJS is significantly different from its predecessors. The new grille, head and tail lights are only a few of the exterior differences you'll notice from earlier models. The 92 XJS is powered by Jaguar's 5.3 liter V12 engine which develops 263 horsepower at 5,350 RPMs. The torque tops out at 288 foot-pounds at a low 3,200 RPMs. It's a lot of power, but don't worry, the three-speed automatic transmission won't let you waste it on spinning your tires. Power comes on smoothly and effortlessly and leaves you with the feeling that the 55 mile per hour speed limit is just the beginning. On the downside, that big V12 is a thirsty devil, especially when carting around the 4,000 plus pounds that the XGS convertible weighs. The EPA estimates are 13 miles per gallon in the city, 17 on the highway. Our test loop of mixed highway and city driving gave us an average of 14.5 miles per gallon. That's not exactly a heartwarming number, but the Jaguar's new trip computer told us that our average speed was lower than 30 miles per hour over 300 miles. Our XJS test model handled excellently and showed none of the loss of rigidity as some might expect in so large a convertible. The 15-inch alloy wheels are made with Z-rated Goodyear Eagle tires and fully independent coil spring suspension. Braking powder comes courtesy of ABS anti-lock brakes featuring big 11-inch vented discs in front and 10-inch discs in the rear. To activate the electronic automatic power roof, you must first engage the parking brake, probably because the roof control is flanked by the power window controls. The soft top on the Jaguar is the most thoroughly insulated we've tested so far. Once sealed, very little road noise leaks in. Headroom with the top up is good, but cramped for anyone over six feet tall. The glass rear window easily folds into its compartment when you lower the top. The canvas boot that covers the retracted roof can be used as an option, and that's good because it's such a tight fit that it's almost too hard for one person to attach. With the top down, it's much easier to understand the attraction to open-air English touring cars. The wood for the trim is taken from a single piece of burled walnut and is burnished and waxed to an unbelievable deep, rich finish. The tan leather seats are soft and supple. The controls for the power seats are located on the doors, and of course the seats are heated for those cold mornings. The memory functions for the rear seats also control the side and rear view mirrors. Keeping with its classic heritage, the XJS moves into the 90s with a new set of analog gauges new control surfaces, and a new trip computer. The climate control system is also new, but somewhat confusing with its separate controls for heat and cold. The XJS offers one of the most complete stereo systems we've seen to date. The speakers are larger than ever, and the sound is crisp and clear. 
The radio features one AM and two FM preset banks. There's also a weather band search in case you feel like chasing down a sunny day. For a two-seater, the XJS convertible offers plenty of storage space. The compartment behind the front seats can easily hold a picnic for two, while the oddly shaped trunk has room for at least two small Pullmans. A majority of that space, however, is taken up by the full-size spare tire. There's also room for the optional CD changer as well. The 1992 Jaguar XJS is supported by a four-year, 50,000-mile vehicle warranty. A customized trip routing service which can give you directions to anywhere in the USA, and a roadside assistance service which has been extended from three to four years. Over the years, Jaguar has made a reputation for building some of the finest cars on the road. And with Jaguar's new parts processing plant, they hope to continue this heritage. Unfortunately, our test model suffered from a few glaring defects. The least of our problems was with the tension in the driver's side shoulder harness but that could easily be fixed. Secondly, the carpeting on the passenger side flooring was loose and revealed the floorboards. However, the worst problem involved the driver's side windshield wiper, which failed in the middle of a rainstorm.